question every dude wants to know. How did you get into the industry? Uh, gosh, I'll try and keep it more on the shorter side. Uh, I was dating a girl who had started doing some girl-girl activity in the business, and she basically kind of brought me in. I was helping her getting to know people, and through that process, I kept getting asked if I was talent. And I was like, no, I'm the pervert that watches this stuff. I'm not talent. And uh, her and I spoke about it, and her initial reaction was, you are not having sex with these girls for money. And I was like, hey, don't shoot the messenger. Through a little bit of time, she was like, well, how much money? And then the, the age-old question of, can you really do it? And I was like, oh, shit, I don't know. She's like, okay, if you can get hired, you can try it, and then we'll go from there. Eight years later, I'm here. So is being a male porn star as awesome a job as it's it, I think it's just like anything. It has its legitimate ups and downs. And I've always put it like, you know, when it's good, it's really good. And when it's bad, it's horrible. What's the downside to it? Um, the downside to this business is if you're having a bad day, a.k.a. you're having a hard time performing and things like that, it's, it's just rough. You know everybody's staring at you. You know everybody's waiting on you. But they don't dare say anything to you, you know, because that's just going to, you know, exacerbate the situation. And you know under their breath, they're like, ah, oh, this motherfucker. I swear to God, he better hurry up. I'm hungry. We're running over time. And you know all these things as a performer. So you're trying to focus. And you know they're thinking it, but they don't dare say it. You know, so, I mean, that, that's, that's one of the downsides. So who have been some of your favorite girls to shoot for? Oh gosh, um, there's always a lot over the years, but consistently, um, uh, Jessica Drake, um, Romy Rain is amazing, um, Asa Akira is, you know, mind-blowing, um, Destiny Dixon is, is a dead stunner right there. Um, there's a lot, you know, just those are the kind of the ones I've worked with most recently, you know, so they kind of pop into my head, but they're all really awesome. you played a couple, a couple of comic book characters. <coughs> yeah. And Deadpool, how is it playing some comic book characters? I love it. Hey, hey I love being the, the anti-hero, uh, the villain, you know, the however you want to classify him, the head bad guy. Um, the first one that I did was actually in the Star Wars uh, parody. And I played one of the, the mercenaries in the cantina. So they did this really cool getup for me. And then it was, after that, it was, um, I think it was Mandarin. I played Mandarin also. So I actually had called Axel and told him, like, listen, you guys need a Mandarin character. He's like, oh, we're going to hire this Asian dude. But it's not going to be a sex performer. It's just going to be, you know, non-sex. And I was like, don't do that. And so I called the makeup artist, Renee, and said, listen, I need you to make me Asian. And she was like, what? And I was like, no, I know you're good with prosthetics. So we got the prosthetic Asian eyes, and I did the, the skull cap hair and the whole joint, and I sent him the pictures, and he's like, who's that? And I'm like, that's me. And he was like, done, we're doing it. Uh, and Deadpool's probably my favorite to date. Um, playing that character actually made me a huge Deadpool fan. Super, and I'm, I know Ryan, um, Ryan Reynolds has the Deadpool movie coming out, I believe, at the end of this year. So I'm really like on, on board and wanted to see that. Uh, see, that was my second question, if you were a fan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I didn't know much about the Deadpool character when I first got involved. And um, uh, Eli Cross, who's another director, he was like, you need to be Deadpool. And I was like, why? And he's like, go read about him and you need to be Deadpool. And his sarcasm and demeanor and things like that are uh, kind of run parallel to my own style of, of comedy and what I find funny. And, uh, you know, I even played his video game. I have his video game. And it, it's just hilarious to me. It's, it's probably the realest comic book character that I've ever seen. I think he's dope. I'm always excited about the, uh, the acting nominations, you know, since they never uh, nominate me for sexual stuff, which means I must be a better actor than I am having sex. Thanks. Um, no, but I, I, do, I do like those, those awards because, uh, you know, contrary to popular belief, some of us do put some time, effort, and energy into the scripts and the acting. And, you know, if they tell me it's important, then I treat it like it's important. So even if the end user is not all that excited about it, we do put the time, effort, and energy into making the characters as real as we can, you know, for that for that time being. And uh, so I always look forward to every time I'm nominated for best actor or best supporting actor or things like that. 
So you enjoyed the actual acting process from being in I I love the acting process. I've I've been SAG for 12 years, something like that. Uh, so my background originally was acting. Uh, so to continue it forward from there, I, you know, it's kind of funny because I never thought that I'd be doing adult films and then acting in adult films on top of it. That wasn't how I saw that going, but I'm certainly happy it did. So let's say, and I'm sure you get this asked all the time, the guy say, oh, what can I do to get into the industry? What's, what's, what do you answer? Um, you know, there's always the age old, get 10 of your, 10 of your friends, put them in a circle, whip your dick out and get hard. I'm, yeah, that might be one way to see if you're cracked up for it. But the truth is, it's just not a very, not a very forgiving business. Um, you know, when you think that this is the job for you, remember that it's not just a matter of being able to perform. People are putting money on you, you know. These shoots cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars every couple hours. So if you hold up production because you're having a bad day, you're costing everybody money. And that usually is one of the biggest factors in hiring male talent is, you know, can he do the job? Not just can he show up and get his dick hard, but can he do the job? Does he know what a hair light is versus a backlight? Does he know how to open up for the camera? Does he know what a tight shot is versus a wide? And so on and so on and so on. It is a job, you know, and if you think all you're going to do is come in and fuck a couple hot girls like Jessica Drake and Asa and Destiny, you better think again because they don't care. You know, you get booked with who you get booked with. And when you show up to work, that's who you better like a whole lot that day. Whether you like it or not, it's a job. All right, so what do you do on your spare time? Oh, uh, my spare time. Uh, anybody who knows anything about me knows that I, I coach and train CrossFit uh, pretty much every day, except for rest days. Um, so I'm heavily involved in being athletic. Uh, I have a martial arts background, so I still stay involved in MMA as much as I can. Um, and I love motorcycles. I love I love toys. So I have you know a couple cars, a couple bikes, and that that's where my my heart is always laid. So you say you're an MMA. Do you follow MMA? Uh, yeah, I follow MMA. Uh, usually closer to the the weight divisions that I've coached, um, but on the whole, I follow MMA. Yeah. Mm, gosh, uh, I'm a huge Cain Velasquez fan. Um, since since day one, I've been a Cain Velasquez fan, and even though he uh, he just let uh, just lost uh, uh, Cormier, I think DC's a beast, and you know I, I really hope he bounces back. Um, so I'm a huge DC fan. Um, there's a couple 155ers that I'm fond of. Jose Aldo at 145, or I think, actually I think he's yeah I think he's 145. Um, those, those guys, they, they stick out in my mind. All right. um, any projects you have lined up? Um, this year we have a lot of directorial stuff. Um, I have a bunch of stuff for Penthouse uh, from last year. I've been directing for Penthouse for a while. Uh, I might be trying to put something else together and maybe get someone like Wicked back involved. They supported me on my very first feature and it did really well. It actually won some directing awards and production awards. So. That's always good when it's your first one. Kind of gives you something to rest on. And uh, I'm starting to write a little something. Maybe I'll send it to digital and they'll be nice enough to at least, you know, produce it even if I'm not directing it. We'll see. Do you enjoy working behind the scenes? You know, I, I do enjoy working behind the scenes. And what I realized that behind the scenes is I'm a way, way bigger pervert than I ever thought that I was, right? Because... When I'm in front of the camera, I'm doing what the directors want me to do. You know, what's that? You want me to grab her tits, smack her ass, and call her whore. Okay, cool. You know, whatever they ask me to do, I do. Um, but when you're behind the camera, if you're thinking, you know what would be great is if she, she grabbed his dick with two hands. You're like, hey, hey, grab your dick with two hands. Like, you know what I mean? Like, whatever you think, whatever your perversion is, you can make that. And that, to me, the first time I did that, I was like, wow, I'm a huge pervert. Nice. Any final words, Derek? Uh, it's been eight years, and I appreciate all the support that I've had. Uh, I never thought it would last as long. The, the ball-headed tattooed guy, I guess, kind of made it long term. Go figure that out. And, uh, you know, keep watching. I'm, I'm still loving the game. Thank you very much. My pleasure.